Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Tuesday, Mars Day, September 5th, and the energies in the day adds up and reduce the number three vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. I don't know why um, today today's energy kind of feels like... Um, it's almost, it's like a school skipping day. It's that vibe. If anybody here has ever skipped school, you might know what I'm talking about, where it's like you get there and it just feels like, um, it just feels like you got somewhere better to be, even though you don't. But the thought of being somewhere else just feels so much more exciting. It's like anywhere but here. And it's like, is it Dorothy? It's like snap the shoes together and just bounce. Um, the spirit and the spirit energy that we're working with um, for today's message is fish and when it comes to the fish as a spirit animal um, message i think about fertility and i'm also looking at the moon energy tying into that also bringing me to fertility and when i think about the fish as fertility it brings me to say dreams and how in my culture growing up if someone dreamt about fish it would represent pregnancy. And I've had situations where I've dreamt about fish for a few people and found out that, yeah, they were in fact pregnant. So, and when you look at where the moon is placed, it's almost like, you know, the fish could be pregnant. Um, and when I look at, say, this energy, it um, brings me to say, not necessarily that, oh, someone finds out they're pregnant today because, um, you know, that could be a thing. The energies in the day does add up and reduce the number three vibration and number three does deal with um, a child. But I feel like, you know, pregnant with a dream, pregnant with a goal, pregnant with, um, you know, some this new idea. But when I look at the fish energy and the energies in the day adding up and reducing to number three vibration, I don't know, I get the feeling of good news. It's like good news coming in, some kind of an opportunity being presented, some opportunity presenting itself and some kind of a good news, something to celebrate. I don't know why there's a, there's a, there's this feeling of celebration and maybe because the number three energy, the day adds up and reduces to number three, is such a youthful, childlike, playful energy. Maybe there is just this playful vibe to the day, but I'm loving it because with the fish energy coming out and the moon, um, the moon here, it just brings me to this resourceful, optimistic feeling. On a day like today, it brings me the feeling of like, regardless of what's happening, it's, 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 it's almost like, it's like nothing could get you down type of vibe. And it's like, even if something does bum you out briefly, it's like you bounce back because there's that optimistic feel about the day. And the, the day is the fifth. And the number five deals with sudden and unexpected changes. And maybe that optimistic feeling is because the, you know, whenever the number five is present, we will find that the day starts um, the day goes from one extreme to the next. So maybe there is this optimistic feeling because the mind isn't focused on one thing too long. The mind isn't focused on one thing too long in order to be bummed out or overwhelmed. That might be a thing. And the number five deals with luck and opportunity because the number five for me is that glitch in the matrix, is that sudden and unexpected occurrence that happens where in the moment while it's happening, it might be devastating because we don't know how it's going to end. The unknown is what's scary. And, but when it's all said and done, it's like, damn, this was the best thing that could ever happen. So when it comes to say the energies in today, I just get this feeling of, you know, it's like, it's like, there's this winning feeling about it. It's like, 
it, it, it feels good. Like there's, yeah, there's this winning feeling about the day, very optimistic and winning feeling about the day. That's, that's the feeling that I keep getting. Um, yeah, it feels, it feels good. It feels good. Like I said, even if something bums you out, it doesn't last for long. And we have the chariot energy in the reversal position. In the upright position, the chariot talks about moving forward on something. It also talks about balance. As you could see, there's, you know, this energy here brings me to balance and moving forward. It's like, it's like a vehicle. It's like an approach towards something. In the reversal position, it represents stagnance. Um, it's almost like break, a car breaking down. It's like, um, yeah, something is stagnant. But at the same time, even though this energy is in the reversal position and something might be stagnant, like I said, the number five energy in today being the, fi the fifth is that glitch in the matrix. Whenever I see the number five energies or those who are associated with it, I always imagine that whatever happens for them, um, happens to them is happening for them. Like an example I'll give is like the person who breaks down and their car breaks down in the perfect place. And I remember when I used to commun commute from Connecticut to Massachusetts, and one day I thought my car broke down, but really it ran out of gas. I guess I thought I was going to wait until a certain exit, wait until I got wherever to get gas. Or maybe normally I keep my tank full. So maybe <clears throat> I wasn't paying attention because it's not like me to drive around with my tank low, especially with me commuting an hour um, at that time. But anyways, I don't know. I missed it. And I guess I missed it somehow and it ran out. But the car broke down at such a convenient spot. Like it could have broke down on the highway. But instead it broke down like right after I got off the highway and got to like a side road that was just so convenient. And my cousin, you know, who, who was a mechanic was able to come and assist me and realize, you know, what I needed help with. But it just worked out so perfectly. So what I'm getting today is like something might not be going your way, but it's actually working out perfectly. It's working out the way it's supposed to with the car situation. That was inevitable because of my carelessness. But at the same time, it happened so perfectly. So for some people, something might be inevitable because of your carelessness or um, maybe not your carelessness, but something is inevitable. But then for others, it's like something is inevitable, but something is actually a doorway to something else. It's like, I think of the person who, you know, the, the situation happens, but then it, you end up meeting the love of your life. You end up meeting your bestie. You end up getting your dream job. You end up something clicks for you. And you realize, oh my God, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life because I can't see myself not being a part of this world. It's like something clicks for you. It's like something happens where it feels like it's against you, but it actually clicks for you. And it just feels good. Like when it comes to the energies in today, for most of you, it's like nothing could get you down even if it tried. I love that. I, I wish every day felt like that. But of course, every day can't be like that. Um, and for myself personally, I've been reflecting and realizing like, uh, thank goodness for the moments when everything is going so perfect and I slack and then fall off. And then I experience the dark night of the, you know, the, the dark nights moments. And then I'm humbled. And then I'm so grateful for the good days because I know what it feels like to be so bummed out, feel so down and, you know, going through a state, a mental state where it's like, nothing can go right. It's like those moments help me to appreciate the moments where everything is going good and help those moments to last so much longer because of, you know, the cycles that we go through. When it comes to today, today is ruled by Mars energy. Mars is the ruler of the day. And I love how Mars is being positively aspected by the moon in Taurus and by the moon in Taurus, and the moon conjunct Uranus in Taurus and also Pluto and Capricorn. So what I love about Mars energy, Mars is our motivation. And with Mars and Libra, we are seeing how teamwork makes the dream work. We're seeing how, you know, it's better when we are um, connected with people who are in alignment with our truth or our goals. 
it's beneficial when we're a part of a community in the sense that, you know, we inspire each other. We learn things from each other. Um, but with Mars positively aspecting Pluto, um, with Mars positively aspecting Pluto and Capricorn, to me, it's like our motivations is in alignment with our ability to take control of our goals, of our destiny. And talking about Pluto, okay, so Pluto, I think, um, okay, what was it? I think in June, Pluto went in retrograde. I think June 1st, don't quote me. I think June 1st, Pluto went in retrograde. And then by July 11th, maybe it moved from Aquarius into Capricorn. And soon Pluto is about to go direct. And I'm so freaking happy because since no, but you know what I'm saying? I'm freaking happy. Like Pluto has been bothering me. Pluto hasn't been bothering me. Pluto has been helping me. But anyways, reflect since June, reflect on how like basically the merry go around that you've been been through in your mind um redefining your goals your legacies like if you reflect back from june till now some of you might realize that certain goals that you had for yourself change big time may have did a straight 180. i know for me it has and all of that and it's crazy because like we talk about like you know the slower moving planets like most of us think that, you know, we want to focus more on the faster moving planets because that's where it's at. But honestly, to me, it's all of them because they're all aspecting each other based on their distance between each other. They're all telling a story and they're all pulling on us in different ways. So yeah, w with Pluto energy in retrograde, which is about to go direct sometime soon in the near future, like your goals and your ambitions may have changed big time as far as how you want to be remembered, how you want the world to see you. I know mine has in a way that I would have never imagined, but would have only happened through me maturing, me maturing and realizing that um, certain things are possible for me, that I'm capable of certain things. But anyways, Mars is positively aspecting Pluto and the moon conjunct Uranus in Taurus. Um, Jupiter is also in Taurus. So when I look at Mars energy there, this is where, you know, some of us can see where we belong as far as tribes or community or different people we relate to and how that influence and supports our legacies, our goals in the world, and also us creating stability and security for ourselves in an innovative way. So I love how Mars is positively aspected because the way how Mars is positively aspected to me, that's tying into the optimism in the day where it's like, even though for some of us, certain things, you know, we're, we're experiencing some kind of a delay or slowdown. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's like, it can't kill your vibe. It can't kill your vibe because even though that's happening, it's like, you're so optimistic where you're like, okay, damn, that sucks. But if that didn't happen, that I wouldn't have learned about that. I wouldn't have learned about that. And now I wouldn't have been doing this. It just feels so optimistic. It feels so good. Mars is being opposed though by Neptune and Pisces and with the opposition between Mars um, and Neptune is nothing major. It's just that Neptune energy, you know, introspection and reflection, but where Mars is, we're more motivated by connecting with others. But to me, um, when it comes to that opposition, it brings me to the importance of um, entertaining and enjoying the presence of others, but making sure we take just as much time to reflect and spend time in silence with ourselves and not get so lost in the companies of others or get so lost in the companies of others and allow them to have expectations that are unrealistic. Um, I think about how, you know, we get so excited sometimes and we dive in and then we end up ghosting or acting weird because we got so lost in the moment. We forgot about boundaries and things that we need in order for us to have successful, healthy connections with others. But, um, yeah, for the most part, the moon is, um, in Taurus, it's, positively aspected. I mentioned the Mars Pluto, um, um, 
the the grand the 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 grand trine between Mars um and Pluto that's being made to the moon. The moon is in a good place. I like how the moon feels because the moon feels optimistic. It's curious. It's it's a bit busybody. It's focusing on finances and stability and security, but it's so innovative and futuristic. When it comes to the energies in today, like wow, I feel like it's been a long time. It's been a while. It's been a while since I felt like since I felt like this, where, like I said, even if something isn't going right, it's like the, the perspective, the outlook is so optimistic. And with the energies in the day adding up and reducing to number three energy, that's childlike, creative, imaginative energy. But at the same time, it's so resourceful. So it's like, regardless of what goes wrong today, it's like you can see a way out. And when it comes to say this energy, some of you guys might want to play with this energy and might want to reflect on certain things certain problems in your life that you want to solve and kind of allow yourself to surrender and allow this childlike, playful, youthful energy help you to um, help you to dive into it and come up with solutions and just write them down. Like I'm a big believer in just taking notes and write it down and going back to it later when these great ideas and things come come to mind. But like I mentioned, Pluto retrograde energy, Pluto will be going direct soon. And since Pluto been in retrograde, you know, I'm going to revisit this when Pluto goes direct. But since Pluto been in retrograde starting, I think, June 1st, um, it started in retrograde and it was first in Aquarius where, you know, of course, focus was on friend groups. Um, friend groups and the different groups we associate ourselves with. But by July, it moved into Capricorn. And since moving into Capricorn, a lot of you may have changed your position when it comes to career goals and ambitions. And if you did, I would love to hear that. I would love to know. And if that's what you're experiencing, you know, perfect example of how the planets influence our lives and just from our awareness of them pulling on us because to me it's like you know we're made up of mostly water just like the planet and the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon pulls on the earth and just influences life on a whole and that's the same thing that happens to us with the planets um the sun the moon and the planets based on their distance you know their gravitational pull impacts us in ways and when the planet is retrograding I personally feel like they slow down so their their strength is even stronger. So this goes to show, like say Pluto retrograding in Capricorn and how some of us have changed positions when it comes to our goals, tying into Jupiter and Taurus and how some of us looking at stability and security and finding practical ways to feel secure and feeling safe. Um, you know, this might explain why I say someone at one point may have had a spiritual career goal and then it switched to a practical career goal. And when it comes to this flip flop switch, this is where we owe ourselves. Um, we owe ourselves the we owe ourselves to do the due diligence and reflect and make sure that again, um, instability and fear of lack is not motivating our decision. And actually we can see ourselves enjoying the process, um, that will get us to this new goal or a legacy or a definition of success that we just set for ourselves. Because, you know, with Uranus transiting Taurus, which will be there for a while, has been there for a while, everything is being shooken up when it comes to our, you know, just the systems that govern this earth and create comfort and stability, whether it's financial, food, education, all of that is being shaken up. So from the changes with all of that, that could stem fear into some of us and push us in certain directions. So we want to make sure fear is not the motivating factor. And in fact, you know, new in, we're gaining new interests and from us growing in ways and gaining new interests, that's what's motivating our decisions. Because if fear is a motivating factor, we'll find ourselves looping as we entering into enter into another career or another path only to be socially socially celebrated and find ourselves feeling miserable as it doesn't nurture us and feed us the way we would like to fe be fed because it doesn't utilize all that we have to offer. But again, like I mentioned about Pluto, the Pluto transit, I would love to know like, you know, what's up with you when it comes to that. It's such a pleasure sharing these messages with you guys. Um, if you'd like to book a natal chart coaching session with me or check out my exclusive weekly content only on Patreon, the links for that is in the description box below. 
but please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.